The James Webb Space Telescope, when it launches in 2018, will be the largest telescope ever sent into orbit. It will have a mirror more than twice the size of Hubble. It will orbit farther out than the moon. And it will give us a glimpse at the earliest history of the universe. But while the James Webb is being built, and the Hubble snaps its breathtaking shots of other galaxies, there's a lot of astronomy happening here on Earth. This is the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. It's been in operation since 1894 and is home to some remarkable telescopes. There's machinery here that discovered Pluto and found evidence of an expanding universe. We took a trip to Lowell to learn the basics of how telescopes work and how they're used. And we got someone wildly overqualified to explain it to us. So uh, my name is Michael West. I'm the Deputy Director for Science here at Lowell Observatory. The way astronomers often think of telescopes is we call them light buckets. And so if you think of the light from the planets and stars and galaxies as little luminous droplets raining down on us, the bigger the bucket, or in this case, the bigger the mirror or lens that you have, the more light you collect and the fainter objects you can see, the more detail you can see. That's how we think of telescopes, as, as light buckets. Telescopes haven't changed all that much since 1894, though they have gotten bigger. This is the Discovery Channel Telescope, the biggest and newest piece of hardware at Lowell. Completed in 2012, the DCT boasts a primary mirror, or light bucket, that's 4.3 meters across, making it the fifth largest telescope in the continental U.S. It's actually located about an hour south of Lowell in a national forest with minimal light pollution. All in all, it's a very, very impressive telescope. But if you ask an astronomer, they'll tell you the telescope isn't really the point. It doesn't matter what size telescope you give us. We don't care unless it's got good instruments on it. That's the astronomer we did ask, Dr. Lisa Prado. Her team uses the DCT to study very young binary stars. Those are two stars orbiting each other. The instrument they want to use is called an infrared spectrograph, which will measure a wide range of infrared light collected by the DCT. It's valuable because it can measure a star's unique characteristics, like its star's temperature, how fast it's rotating, how fast it's moving toward you or away from you, the gas in the outer layers of the star. You can tell all this great stuff from a spectrum. Dr. Prado is hoping to study binary stars with the Hubble Space Telescope as well, because orbiting telescopes don't have to deal with the Earth's atmosphere. Particles, humidity, and even movement in the upper atmosphere can all make images blurry and difficult to work with. So why bother with ground telescopes? Well, according to Dr. West. You, you never have enough telescopes for astronomers. The, the, the universe is huge, right? There's so much to do, so much to study. What's more, the Hubble Space Telescope is usually overbooked by a factor of 10. So if it records something amazing, it's often the job of ground telescopes to keep studying that something over time. So there's a nice sort of synergy or complementary nature of having Hubble observations and also uh, ground-based observations like with the Discovery Channel Telescope. In other words, we often need ground telescopes to understand what space telescopes see. Also, they are amazing. The night that we visited the DCT, the sun went down, the bay doors opened, and the telescope came to life. And as the stars came out and the astronomers settled into the control room, the Discovery Channel Telescope began a long night of observation. After a night like that, we wanted to know what comes next. When's that eureka moment when photos appear on the screen and you make some huge discovery? Well, for Dr. Prado, it doesn't really work that way. It's been years of piecing all the parts together. And then we sit here in a group meeting and we're like, oh my goodness, look at this, look at this, look at this paper. We missed this before, this paper from 2003. Look, look. And you combine that with something from the Hubble Space Telescope and you combine it with with our observations at DCT. And then you'll find like amazing things. And at the end of it, you're like, holy cow, we've got this great story. This is how real science is done. Discussion, thought, experiment, repeat. From there, what you've learned begins to emerge. And for Dr. Prato, what emerges could be huge. It's a great opportunity to do completely unique science that will sort of change the whole field of star and planet formation. The point is, Astronomy is a long collaboration between space telescopes and ground telescopes, between scientists and their teams. 
But the result of all that, the result of building these huge telescopes and spending all night in the middle of nowhere and crunching the data for weeks on end, there is a payoff there. It's a slow burn, but you're telling a story. And when you get deep into that story, you're like, oh, this is so much better than science fiction. This is so much better because it is real. It's out there. It's happening. Look, if you're not convinced telescopes are cool after this, you should check out the global premiere of Telescope. That should convince you. It's a behind the scenes look at the James Webb Space Telescope and the ins and outs of how that baby will change science. So what do you guys think? Are you excited for the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope? Do you think we should build more telescopes here on Earth? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to DNews and thanks for watching.